The petrol that we've been using in the UK for many years now is changing from E5 to E10 but many people are not sure what the difference is so we thought we'd create a complete guide to the change and explain what it is, what it means for you and your vehicle. We've broken it down into sections so that if you're watching this uh, on YouTube you can skip to any of the sections listed in the description below to get to the bits that you're interested in. The E refers to ethanol or to be more precise bioethanol and the 10 refers to the percentage of that bioethanol that's added to the fuel. Now previously we were using E5 which is obviously 5% bioethanol which was added into the petrol but from September 2021 this will be increased to 10% bioethanol. Because bioethanol is an alcohol based renewable energy source it is produced from crops such as grain and sugar cane producing it um, lowers the impact on the environment and so reduces the carbon emissions from petrol vehicles. Now increasing the bioethanol content of the petrol from 5 to 10 percent could reduce the CO2 emissions by 750,000 tonnes a year which is the equivalent of taking 350,000 cars off the road in the UK according to the government. This is just one of the initiatives in the UK that the government's introducing to reduce the emissions and greenhouse gases. E10 petrol has been used in America, Australia and across continental Europe for quite some time. And so vehicles manufactured from 2011 onwards have been designed to run on this fuel. So if your vehicles are 2011 onwards, you should have no problem but the government has created a website where you can check your vehicle to make sure. If your vehicle is older than a 2011, it still may be fine to run on the E10, but again, you can check it on that government website, which we'll put a link to, um, and that can you know, make sure that you're okay. But if it's not able to run on that higher bioethanol content, don't panic, there are alternatives which we'll explain shortly. And if you own an old classic car, a trusted friend of ours who restores classic cars has written an excellent post on the subject, which we'll include a link to. And you can also see some great photos of some lovely old classic motors as well. No, not um, with vehicles with electronic engine management systems. Because of the sensors all over the vehicle which monitor what's happening with the air and the fuel intake and um, exhaust gases and so on, the engine management system will take care of that and make all the necessary adjustments when you use the new fuel. If your vehicle doesn't have an electronic management system, it would be worth contacting your local specialist for your particular brand and discussing it with them. You could also check on that government website, which we've got a link to. Because bioethanol doesn't burn as efficiently and create the same levels of energy as petrol, it's estimated to be about 33% lower than petrol. As there's only going to be an additional 5% in the fuel, this will have a pretty small impact on the performance and economy of your vehicle. Different experts expect fuel economy to reduce by about 1-3% to depending on which expert you listen to. And this is a result of that slightly reduced efficiency of that new blended fuel. As you can imagine, this will also have a similar effect on power and performance because of the reduced efficiency, although the difference is likely to be barely noticeable in most vehicles. Yes, there are alternatives to E10. Whilst the standard petrol that will be supplied in the filling stations from September 21 onwards will be the E10 grade, many of them will also still supply E5 in the form of the super unleaded petrol such as the Shell V-Power, BP Ultimate and Tesco 99 Momentum Fuel. This can be used in your vehicle if it's not compatible with the new E10 petrol. It can also be mixed with E10 if necessary or you want it to boost the E10 that's already in your tank with no adverse effect. The best place to start research is at the government website, which we'll uh, include the link to. The fuel producers have also got information on the E10 fuels, and we've included links to both Shell and to BP. 
Now another good source um, for independent information are the breakdown services. So again, we've got links there to the RAC and to um, the AA as well. So if you own a classic car or just like looking at photos of nice old cars, you can also check out our friends at the Pop Project Shop where they've got some good advice there. So I hope this has been useful and um, if there are any questions that we've not answered already, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we'll try our best to help you. Thanks.